Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be working with numbers again, and this time we're going to be taking a deeper look at decimal numbers and why you would or wouldn't want to use them in your programs. So let's have a look. Let's launch Visual Studio. Let's create a new project. We'll be sticking with console app.net framework C sharp. And we'll call this one decimals. So just like before, when we were working with integers, uh, decimals are another type of number. Uh, decimals are probably one of the most important numbers. They're very good for financial or monetary calculations. They have very good precision, up to 29 uh, digits. So you can, you've got 29 digits of precision. Some of the other number types in .NET have uh, much better performance, but much lower precision. But if you're ever building an app that deals with orders from customers or times when you need to make calculations um, and they need to be very precise and they have decimal numbers, decimal is the type of object you should use. So let's start by mapping out what we want to do. So here's some I prepared earlier. So we want to declare some decimal variables. So the way you declare decimal variables is slightly different to how we declare integers before. So before we would say bar x equals one, and that would get us our int value. With decimals, it's a bit different. You, you have to obviously declare a decimal to begin with. It doesn't have to be a non-whole number, but what you have to do is you have to put m at the end. So we'll hover over x and we see that x is, oh, is a decimal. But if I got rid of the m, you'd see it's actually a double. And a double is another type of a decimal number, essentially. But that one, whilst it does have much better performance, it doesn't have as good accuracy. So it's not suitable for financial type calculations. So it's just something to watch out for. So when you're doing your decimal numbers, you need to make sure you put M at the end. And they don't actually have to be true decimal numbers in the sense that, you know, more than one, you know, between one and two. So we could get rid of that. And we could just have one m and it will still be a decimal it won't be an integer whereas if we got rid of the m it'd see it'd be the integer and if we had a point one on the end without an m then it actually thinks it's it, it declares it as a double so numbers can be a bit confusing there's actually quite a lot of different types of numbers just to briefly give you a summary of those there's integer but there's actually integer 32 integer 64 um, you've got doubles, which is the one we're looking at now, another type of non-whole number, very good performance, not so good precision. Uh, you've got decimals. You've also got floats. So there's a, there's a bunch of different number types. And really the key difference between them is how the computer is processing them underneath, like right on the CPU when everything is all binary, the math gets a bit different with the different types of numbers. Sometimes you don't care about accuracy and you really care about speed. So you'll use one type of number in those instances. And sometimes like with financial stuff, you really don't want to be getting those figures. You know, you could round up or round down on some large numbers thousands of times a day and, you know, that company could lose lots of money. So in those instances, precision is actually the most important. So Let's declare some decimals. So we'll say var x equals, and we'll do 1.5 m, because we have to put m for a decimal. Maybe var y equals 3.145678 m. So now that we've got some decibels, uh, decimals, let's look at converting them into strings, because sometimes you might, actually, let's do an example. So let's say, um, var price equals 1.98. So something costs one, say one pounds and 98 pence or one dollar and 98 cents. And maybe we have an integer number and we say var amount equals 37 or 27. So then we look at the total price. So 
var total equals amount times price. And if we look at total, you see it's a decimal number because we've, even though we've used an integer in our sum, it's, it's timesing a um, decimal number. So we've got a total amount here. And you might find that actually, if we, let's, um, let's just add a, oh, what should we do? Let's just add a breakpoint actually. Let's start adding breakpoints that we looked at in the last lesson. So now if we run this program and we add our breakpoint, and we look at total, so we have actually got a um, two decimal place number here, but let's just say this one cost 987 for some reason. <laughs> so if we looked at the total, you can see actually it's 53 pounds and 64.9 pence or $53 and 64.9 cents. And so if you've got a, a e-commerce website, that might not make much sense to the user and you might want to just show the value to two decimal places. So when you convert that into a string to put into your website or into your UI of your Windows program, you, you know, you want to get rid of that final um, decimal place. So some ways we can do that. Let, let's just output this to the console. So we'll console.writeline. And what we'll do, we'll start off by just putting the total out there. And we will just make it obvious what that is. So total of calculation. And we'll restart our program and have a look at that. So just pop that up. You can see the total of the calculation is 53.64, but we want to get rid of this nine on the end. So let's go and see what that looks like. So we'll just copy and paste that. And we will say total of the calculation to two decimal places. It's really easy. So all objects actually have this function called to string. And that converts them to a string. But number functions actually allow you to pass a string into that function as a parameter. You see in here it's called format. So we can actually specify the formatting of the number as it comes out. And what we can do is we can say 0 0.00, and that'll give us, you know, number to two decimal places. We can also, if we copy and paste that, and we'll do one decimal place, we can just put 0.0, .0. and now if we run our program, you'll see we started with 53.649. We rounded it to two decimal places by using the string format, and we got 53.65, and then we rounded it to one decimal place, and we got 53.6. So that's good if you just want to output a value to the user in a string format, you've got a handy little function there that just does that for you on the fly and you don't need to think about it too much. But that's not always what you want to do. Sometimes you might actually need this to be rounded, but also stay as a decimal number rather than a string. So there is actually an object called the math object, and we'll use that to do some rounding of the numbers. So let's just create a rounded number. We'll say var rounded equals, and we'll use this math object. You see this one? Provides constant and static methods for trigonomic, logarithmic, and comic mathema common mathematical functions to browse for the .NET framework source code. For this type, see the reference source. So math is full of very common sort of algorithms, essentially. Um, we've got square root, we've got a constant for pi, if you ever wanted to reference pi in some calculations. We've got lots of other common um, mathematical algorithms and functions. So you don't actually need to build any of these yourself if you are really into maths, which I'm not. You'll probably understand a lot more of these than I do. I typically don't use math much more than for round and maybe square root sometimes. If you're going into game development, you'll find actually you'll be using some of these quite a lot to calculate the distance between two points or whether, you know, certain 
triangles intersect in 3D space, things like that. So um, that's what a lot of this stuff's really useful for. But today we will be looking at the round method. So if we have a look at that one, you see it can take a decimal, it returns a decimal and it can take a decimal and it rounds the decimal to the nearest integral value. Uh, that's actually not the one we're gonna use. We're gonna use, if we pass in our total and we add a comma, you'll see actually, cause we've got eight overloads, there's a bunch of different ways we can use this. Um, and what I want to do is pass in our double and pass in the number of digits that we want returned. We wanna round by that many digits. And I will say, let's round it to two and complete the line. And let's just copy like we did above from the example. And we'll say rounded one, rounded two. We'll just put a one in here. And actually, I'm just going to move this up a line. So this is a cool little shortcut. If you hold Alt while you're on a line and you press the up arrow key, it moves the line you're on to the line above and the line above to the line you're on. So it kind of swaps them around. So that's really handy. Let's run our program and see what that looks like. So we'll look at rounded one, 53.6, just like what we had in the in the console. And we look at rounded two, 53.65, just like what we had in the console. So that's an introduction into decimal numbers. Um, they work just like integers. You can do your, uh, you know, your multiplication, your division, your subtraction, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can also round them as you convert them to a string quite easily, or you can use the math object to round them and get a, a proper decimal number back as well. Hi guys, well done for making it to the end of the video. Just a quick heads up that there is a link to the project files from today's session in the video description. If you have any questions about anything we've covered today, feel free to leave me a comment. And as always, I will see you in the next one.